2024 is going to be the last full year for the Switch as Nintendo's primary hardware. Nintendo have said to expect an announcement pretty soon, and all other signs are pointing to a Switch successor arriving in the early half of next year. As such, the near record-breaking hybrid finds itself in something of an interesting place. Even seven years in, the Switch continues to enjoy great success, with healthy but slowing hardware sales and plenty of interesting software still arriving at a decent enough clip, especially when compared to the typically quiet and stagnant software release calendars of many consoles this late in their life cycle. However, despite the Switch business continuing at an acceptable pace, it is now clear that Nintendo has a delicate job ahead of them as they attempt to navigate this tricky transition to whatever comes next. With this shift on the horizon, it's an interesting time to reflect on the Switch platform as a whole. Throughout the life of the Nintendo Switch, I've been running an annual State of Switch survey. It's been an intriguing way to kind of check the collective pulse of tens of thousands of Switch owners, getting an overall sense of the sentiment towards the console and how that feeling has kind of ebbed and flowed throughout the hybrid's life cycle. And there's been plenty of ups and downs, be that lofty highs brought about by a record-breaking software, such as pandemic hit Animal Crossing New Horizons, or notable lows, such as the irksome, seemingly ever-present Joy-Con drift situation. For the most part, however, Switch owners have been consistently happy with the machine and its steady software offering. The Switch era has undoubtedly been a good one for any Nintendo fan. However, last year's findings did show some initial shift in sentiment towards the hybrid. With the console kind of entering its twilight years, there was a notable slip in how the console was being perceived, particularly around performance and its capabilities when compared to its modern contemporaries. And this sentiment has kind of only embedded further in the 12 months since, not only due to the likes of the Steam Deck and other handheld PCs showing what this portable form factor can now truly deliver, but also due to the increasingly noisy rumor mill around whatever it is Nintendo has cooking. Yes, the Switch may still be selling in healthy enough numbers, but it's evident that the switched on Nintendo fan is ready to look ahead to whatever is coming next. So to the results from this year's survey. For 2024, the questionnaire looked at things such as what recent games folks decided to pick up, where they spend their time playing, what their hopes are for Nintendo's next machine, and much, much more. Over 3,700 respondents took part this year, and there's a link in the description to my report should you want to check that out. But for now, let's dive into what they had to say about the Nintendo Switch in 2024. Now, I start out by asking all respondents if they actually currently own a Nintendo Switch, and if not, why that may be. Now, of all of those responding, less than 2% said that they currently did not own a Nintendo Switch. Such a low figure is, of course, expected here, as this is an established survey that consistently attracts responses from an enthusiast crowd. Of those without a Nintendo Switch, some 87% said they are now planning on waiting to see what future hardware Nintendo will announce. And this desire to see what's coming next was paired with several comments around performance. Others noted price as an issue as well, and Nintendo have never dropped the Switch price. And a few comments also detailed how it was now too late to kind of invest in a platform when a new one is expected somewhat soon. It's too close to the end of the Switch lifecycle to buy it. Also, things like Joy-Con drift and graphical quality concern me. Knowing my luck, if I buy one now, the Switch 2 will be announced. Performance in the current model is lacking. I want higher, stable frame rates. Next, we turn to those who currently own a Nintendo Switch, and this makes up the majority of those responding, around 98%. Most of those with the console got their first Nintendo Switch during the launch year, back in 2017. And this kind of helps contextualize a lot of the data points seen in this survey somewhat, and should help in kind of our understanding of the type of individual filling it out. These are, for the most part, long-time Nintendo Switch owners with an established history with the platform. The data shows that nearly half got the console either at launch or during that kind of first calendar year. Just under 5% of those responding to this survey got their first Nintendo Switch in either 2023 or 2024. This year, I also asked those with the Switch just how many Nintendo Switch consoles they actually have in their household. And as you might expect, a small majority of households have just the one Switch console. This was around 55%. However, that does mean that a notable 45% of those responding said that they have more than one Nintendo Switch console in their home. Nintendo did actually express an early desire to see multiple Switch units in households, and as this data shows, it's something which seems to have panned out for them. As for which specific Nintendo Switch consoles folks have, it kind of splits out like this. 
the original 2017 main model is owned by some 80% of all respondents. Roughly 19% of respondents own a Switch Lite, which was released in 2019. And a solid 41% of those with a Switch have the latest OLED model. Now, these figures are from all responses, including those with multiple machines. Of those with an OLED, a sizable 86% specified that the updated model was not their first switch and was in fact an upgrade purchase. If we split this down even further for specific variants, both the grey and neon original switch models remain the most commonly owned. But the white OLED is now the third most popular switch variant overall. Next are the findings specifically about Nintendo Switch software. So, just how many Switch games do folk actually own? Well, Nintendo Switch owners have around 50 games, be that physical titles or digital downloads. This median response is up on last year's reported number of 35. As I've said before, this survey attracts an engaged crowd, and as nearly half of those responding this year have had a Nintendo Switch since 2007, they've had plenty of time, seven years, to accumulate a large software library. And it may come as little surprise when you remember that the Switch is now home to over 10,000 games. So due to this kind of enthusiast crowd responding, some share that they own hundreds of Switch games, with a handful even sharing, well, even claiming that they own over 1,000 titles for the platform. As such, the average number of games owned came in at 81 games. The median value of 50 is probably the key number to take away here, though. Let me know in the comments just how many games you think you have for your Switch. This violin chart shows just how the typical Switch library has grown and how the attach rate has kind of evolved over the past seven years. The chart shows the distribution of all responses with a wider shape representing how common a library size response is in a given year. As you can see, the past few years have been rather similar, but there is a small growing trend now towards those with libraries now exceeding 50 to 100 games. On the whole, however, due to the continued output of software, it's kind of an expected trend to see Switch game libraries growing and becoming increasingly diverse as time goes on. Now, as for how things break down between physical versus digital game ownership, the split remains a fairly consistent one. The stats show that, on average, a Nintendo Switch owner's library is 52% digital games. In 2023, this figure stood at 55%, in 2022 it was 53%, and in 2021 it was 51%. It's a stat that hasn't seen much variance throughout the lifespan of the Switch, with digital ownership always kind of ever so slightly ahead of physical software. As I've stated in the past, this stat is not one that's too surprising when you consider the sheer number of Nintendo Switch software titles that are only available digitally via the eShop. It is pretty neat that there's a clear kind of healthy range of digital adoption rates among Switch owners. However, it's also kind of nice to see that in 2024, box software still holds plenty of appeal, be that for a multitude of reasons, preservation, availability, cost, etc. Next, I asked which recent Nintendo published titles folks had picked up for their Switch. Of course, now, Nintendo does themselves periodically share some sales data of certain software titles, but I still kind of deem it worthy to kind of ask this question about recent software releases, as it kind of allows us to get a more immediate sense of what titles have appealed to the kind of core Switch audience. So here's what recent Switch releases, and that's, that's those published by Nintendo from 2023 and 2024 that folks have picked up. As you can see, it's no surprise to see The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as the most selected game. It was the most anticipated release in last year's survey after all. Nearly 75% of respondents said that they now own the game. After Zelda, the most popular releases were Super Mario Bros. Wonder coming in at 59%, the Metroid Prime Remaster at 45%, and the Super Mario RPG Remake coming in at 33%. I also asked what games Switch owners have actually spent the most time playing over the past year. This offers up a timely look at what titles people are actually actively engaged with and what games are proving sticky kind of with the core Switch audience. Here's a rundown of the Nintendo Switch games with the most playtime in 2023. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Splatoon 3 Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Pokemon Violet and Pokemon Scarlet and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Again, it's of zero surprise to see Tears of the Kingdom take the top spot here. It was a mammoth temple release and highly anticipated. The game built upon the success of launch title Breath of the Wild, which itself has shown incredible staying power, adding in vast new areas of Hyrule to explore and giving players lots of new tools to play with. It's a huge game with lots to see and do, so it's one that's obviously going to rack up the hours. 
In fact, a lot of the titles in the top 10 have either vast single-player campaigns or compelling multiplayer components. Other popular responses to this 2023 playtime question include games such as Persona 5 Royale, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Metroid Prime Remastered, Fortnite, Monster Hunter Rise, Stardew Valley, and others. So those are the titles that folks played in 2023, but what about all-time playtime? Here's how the top 10 all-time most played games on the Nintendo Switch shakes out. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Splatoon 3, Splatoon 2, Monster Hunter Rise. Again, this list doesn't really spring up many surprises, although Tears of the Kingdom is a notable new entry on the all-time list. It's also noteworthy to see Monster Hunter Rise in the top 10 if the only title in the list not published by Nintendo. That's not only a huge kind of ringing endorsement for Capcom's 2021 hit, but also validation of Nintendo's own consistent output, if nothing else. So which game genres do you think are well represented on the Nintendo Switch? Well, respondents to the survey overwhelmingly think that the Switch has plenty of choice when it comes to role-playing games, such as JRPGs, turn-based titles, tactical RPGs, and so on. RPGs made up for the most common response here. This was followed up by platformers, Metroidvania experiences, and action-adventure titles. This year saw also kind of a notable number of folks highlight an abundance of farming-related titles, farming sims, as being available on the Nintendo Switch platform. Now, as for which genre folks feel are underrepresented on the Nintendo Switch, the top responses were FPS games, racing titles, sports titles, fighting games, and horror experiences. <laughs> Cloud games on Switch remain a pretty unpopular way to play. 96% of respondents said that they had not bought a cloud version of a game on the Nintendo Switch. Of those who had, these are titles like Control, Resident Evil Village, etc. Around half of them said that they were left dissatisfied with the purchase. It is a model that has not found success on the platform. A quick sidebar here. Several respondents pointed out a desire to play non-cloud versions of the Kingdom Heart titles on the Switch not wishing to try the currently available cloud ones. Data for 2024 shows that a majority of Nintendo Switch owners have played at least one free-to-play game on the platform. Around 66% of respondents indicated that they have downloaded and played such a title, games like Fortnite, Rocket League, etc. If Switch owners had to pick a focus for what sorts of games Nintendo prioritized going forward, what would they choose? I'd pit a return to older legacy series such as F-Zero against new titles and fresh IP such as Ring Fit Adventure. As you can see, typically the results of this question have been fairly evenly split. But in 2024, this appears to have shifted somewhat towards there now being a preference for Nintendo to revisit older franchises. This time, just over 60% of respondents indicated that they would prefer the company to focus on established series rather than new titles. With remakes and older titles kind of being the lion's share of Nintendo's recent output, I'd say that they got this about right. So if folks do want to see Nintendo looking back for potential new game releases, what franchises do Switch owners now feel are kind of right, right for revisiting? Well, I asked Switch owners to name one Nintendo franchise that they would most like to see come to the platform. And the most requested missing Nintendo franchise that Switch owners want to see come to the hybrid is Star Fox. This request was followed by Kid Icarus, F-Zero, Earthbound on Mother, and Golden Sun. Other common responses here include series like Rhythm Heaven, Donkey Kong, be that a new country title or 3D adventure, Punch Out, much to my surprise, uh, Tomodachi Life, Chibi Robo, and Wario Land. Yes, please. Now, what about third-party franchises that folks want to see come to the Switch? Well, the leading request here was for the Yakuza, or Like a Dragon, series to be available on Nintendo's machine. The second most common response for third-party franchises missing on Switch was Fallout. This was followed by Halo in third, Elden Ring in 4th, and more Persona in 5th. More games from the Grand Theft Auto and Final Fantasy series were also popular responses here, along with Baldur's Gate, Hi-Fi Rush, which seems unlikely now sadly, Call of Duty, Tekken, and Chrono Trigger. Finally, I close this software section by asking which year respondents felt was the best for Nintendo Switch software releases. Respondents selected 2023 as the top choice. Games such as Tears of the Kingdom, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Pikmin 4, and Super Mario RPG came out that year. 
followed closely by the original launch year of 2017, Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, etc. Next, we're exploring just how Nintendo Switch owners are actually using their console, looking at things such as playtime, controller preferences, where they play, and more. On average, a Switch owner will play their console for around five hours per week. When asking respondents to think about whether they had played on their Switch more or less during the last 12 months when compared to kind of the year prior, most, 54%, said that they felt they'd played their Switch more. 26% indicated that they play on their Switch for 10 or more hours each week. 9% of respondents said that they play their Switch for one hour or less per week. Playing the Nintendo Switch docked in TV mode remains the most popular way to play, 52%. But as ever, this is only by a small margin. This nearly 50-50 split is solid reconfirmation for me at least that the hybrid nature of the switch is one that consumers clearly like the option to play either portably or up on the big screen is used in pretty much equal measure and therefore kind of earns its place as a valuable feature but do switch owners actually use their console outside of their home well as you can see despite a sizable number of folks playing in handheld mode most switch players said they never or rarely kind of 61 percent combined play the switch outside the Pro Controller is by far the most popular control method when playing the Nintendo Switch. Around 72% said that this was their preferred control method. The average Switch owner has three controllers. Around 57% of respondents indicated that they do not own any third-party controllers for their Switch. Of the 43% with a third-party controller, popular options include those from 8-Bit Do, Do, Hori, and Power A. PDP, Nixie, and Gillikit also saw a few mentions here. Newcomer Cracked. CRKD, uh, the maker of the Nitro deck, also saw a handful of mentions. Most Switch owners have a 128GB microSD card in their Switch, if you care. 256GB is the second most popular card capacity, followed by 512. Nearly 10% of respondents now have a 1TB microSD card installed. This is up from around last year's 4%. A small number of Switch owners, less than 1%, indicate that they have 1.5TB or 2TB cards. Now for some findings regarding the Switch's online subscription service. Nintendo Switch Online, NSO. The survey asked various questions around membership type, service satisfaction, and what other retro platforms they would like to see come to the NSO. Some 77% of respondents shared that they were currently a member of the Nintendo Switch Online service. This is slightly down, actually, on the 80% figure reported in 2023. Of the 23% without a membership, the cost and value for money were kind of the common reasons as to why they didn't have an active subscription. A good number also highlighted that they just don't play online titles. They don't really see a need for the service. Most folks with a membership, uh, around 55%, are on the annual plan. Although a good number, around 40%, are on the shared family plan. 59.6% of Switch Online members now have access to the pricier expansion pack tier. This is up from 48% last year. Of all of the available retro platforms to play on the Nintendo Switch Online service, the SNES library, SNES, SNES, Super Nintendo, uh, however you want to say it, that remains the most popular. Around 85% of members have tried the Super Nintendo selection of games. Around 74% have played the Nintendo Entertainment System titles and 63% have played the Game Boy titles. Some 54% of expansion pack members have played the available Nintendo 64 titles, closely followed by the GBA at 51%. The Sega Genesis titles, however, as part of the kind of expansion pack have only been played by around 30% of players. There's kind of a significant drop off on those. 79% of Nintendo Switch Online members feel that the current basic membership represents good value for money. However, only 49% feel that the expansion pack here is good value for money. In a typical month, a Switch owner will spend on average $52 on gaming. This is down from the $60 value reported last year. Tiny kind of difference really. 71% of Switch owners indicate that they make use of the wishlist feature on the eShop. A huge 90% of Switch owners said that they have downloaded at least one demo from the eShop. This year, I asked about how folks felt regarding the kind of level of curation or, or lack thereof seen on the Nintendo Switch eShop. This question prompted a lot of responses about the kind of overall quality of certain titles seen on the eShop, with respondents repeatedly using the term shovelware to kind of emphasize their concerns about the eShop and the clutter brought about by an increase in many games that are perceived to be kind of like low effort or low quality or both. These comments were alongside concerns and criticism about the eShop's kind of overall interface, its usability, and generally kind of like sluggish performance. Users clearly find it a challenge to easily navigate the eShop, and note that the design doesn't really facilitate an easy user experience. Here are just a few comments from respondents sharing their thoughts on the eShop. 
A lot of bad games make scrolling through very slow and tedious. It could be more curated as the search function is slow and filtering is limited. I probably miss deals on good quality games because I quit scrolling when it slows down and the majority of games I see are garbage. I have no problem with the eShop. I use external websites and Nintendo Direct presentations to determine my purchases. There is so much shovelware on the eShop, it's infuriating to scroll slowly through the thousands of games on sale. I use Deku deals instead of the eShop as browsing is so hard. I'm opposed to censoring and over-monitoring of storefronts, so I'm mostly fine with these shovelware games being allowed on Switch, as it also adds an interesting element to individual libraries when some games are so bad they're good. Now, as for how folks would like to see the eShop improved, several common suggestions popped up. These included better navigation and speed. The performance of the eShop was the most common issue folks want to see fixed. Other improvements included things such as more detailed filtering options and search improvements. The ability to review games, which this was very briefly a thing. User interface changes. Lots of comments picked up on the current interface and how it could be improved to make the store more appealing and easier to use. And amusingly, the addition of music to the store was also a common request but I don't know if that would help with the performance. Next, we're going to focus in on hardware and software issues. It's a broad way to kind of get a high-level feel for how the Switch is holding up, especially as some of us will have had the console for over seven years now, and to see if there are any kind of obvious problems across the Switch platform. The first question here asks respondents which hardware-related problems people have kind of faced with their Nintendo Switch. Just over 87% of survey respondents said that they had experienced Joy-Con drift at some point. After seven years, it's a widespread issue that has touched a large number of Switch owners. However, when it comes to those with the Switch OLED, only 11% said that they had faced the issue on that particular model. The second most common hardware issue outside of Joy-Con Drift is issues with Bluetooth. Around 15% of respondents noted this. The chart here shows just how common other issues such as cracks in plastic, buttons jamming, battery issues, etc. are. After establishing what issues folks have, I then asked Switch owners what one single thing they would most like to see improved about the Switch hardware. And yeah, it's a little surprise to see that fixing Joy-Con drift is the primary number one request. This has been the most requested hardware change for seven years now. Every single time I've done this survey, that's the one thing people want fixed. And the fact that it's still a leading issue is actually a rather negative blight on the Switch platform. Moving beyond drift, other kind of common responses for improvements folks would like to see in Switch hardware include improved battery life, enhanced performance, screen resolution, changes to the ergonomics of the device, and the addition of Hall Effect joysticks. 57% of Nintendo Switch owners have used the Bluetooth headphone feature that was added to the Switch back in 2021. Around half of Switch owners, 49%, have made use of the organization Folders feature added in 2022. I asked what the one thing folks would like to see improved or added to the Switch from a strictly software perspective would be and the top request was to see more themes added to the Switch. Currently, Switch owners can choose from either black or white for their interface, and a desire to have more options here has always been a common one. A close second common software request was to see a native achievement system added to the Nintendo Switch, kind of like you see on the Xbox and the PlayStation. Beyond these, improvements to eShop discovery, cloud saves without the need for an active NSO subscription, and more media apps such as Netflix were also common software kind of feature requests. A good number of respondents also highlighted a desire for improved social features, such as Miiverse or StreetPass. And a few here also kind of noted a desire for an activity log, akin to the one found in the 3DS. To wrap this section up, I asked Switch owners if they kind of made any changes or modifications to their Switch or kind of to their Joy-Con controllers. 678 respondents shared that they have carried out their own repairs on their Nintendo Switch. 261 folks said that they had changed their Joy-Con shells. This is the kind of way to kind of alter the look of the controllers by replacing the plastic housing with kind of novel aftermarket options. Just over 100 folks took things to the next level and changed the housing on the entire Switch console. 159 of those responding indicated that they had jailbroken their Switch. And along similar lines, 135 said that they had modded their Switch in some way. Around 10% of all survey respondents said that they had used a Nintendo Switch emulator tool, such as the now defunct Yuzu, at some point. I figured it was worth asking about emulation this time around, as it's seen a lot of attention of late, but as the data shows, it remains a relatively niche pursuit. So, what games are folks looking forward to on Switch? What do they hope to see in Nintendo's kind of like next machine? This final section looked ahead. Survey respondents were asked to share just one, just one, announced game that they are looking forward to playing on the Switch the most. Here, 
are the current five most anticipated Nintendo Switch games. Paper Mario, The A Thousand Year Door. Metroid Prime 4. Pokemon Legends ZA. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Hollow Knight, Silk Song. Other popular responses here for kind of anticipated upcoming games included Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, Professor Layton and the New World Order Steam, and Epic Mickey Refurbished. Titles such as Hades 2 and The Plucky Squire also saw a handful of responses, and a shout out to the two people who singled out World of Goo 2. Same. Curiously, a notable number of respondents, just over 200 in fact, shared that they couldn't think of any upcoming games that they were actually excited for on the Switch. I also asked members of the Nintendo Switch online service which single retro game they would most like to see come to the service at some point in the future. And just like last year, Pokemon games are the top answer. A smattering of various Pokemon titles were mentioned here, but GBA game Pokemon Emerald was the most requested. Outside of Pokemon titles, a Western release of Mother 3 was a very popular request, followed by N64 game Donkey Kong 64, SNES Classic, Chrono Trigger, and other rare title Diddy Kong Racing. A good number of folks also want to see games such as Metroid Zero Mission, Banjo-Tooie, the original Super Smash Bros. for the N64, Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced, and other rare games such as Perfect Dark and Conquer's Bad Fur Day land on the NSO service at some point. Another Switch Online related question asks folks to pick just one library of games that they would like to see added to the Switch Online service at some point in the future. This would be a growing library of titles from a past retro console. And for the past few years, the GameCube was the most requested retro console that Switch owners would like to see added to the Switch Online service. And that remains true for 2024 by quite the margin. This desire to see GameCube games on NSO is followed by the Nintendo DS, which is kind of tricky to get that working, of course, the Sega Dreamcast, the Wii, and then the PS1. And shout out to the 30 folks who want to see Virtual Boy on NSO. At this point, I asked Switch owners what other systems they currently own. This question helps us kind of get a broader overview of the gaming habits of Switch owners. Around 33% of those responding also have a PS5, and the PS4 came in at just around 30%. Just over 20% said that they own an Xbox, be that a Series S or a Series X. 13% said that they own some form of VR headset, such as PSVR, MetaQuest, etc. The Analog Pocket, Playdate, and the PlayStation Portal all sit at around 3% ownership right now amongst kind of Switch owners. Yes, it's only available in the US right now, but out of all 3,700 respondents, only 8 folks said that they currently own the recently released Apple Vision Pro. 15% of respondents said that they own the Steam Deck. And interestingly, of those who picked up a Steam Deck, a sizable 88% said that their buying habits have changed as a result, and they're now purchasing more games on Steam compared to the eShop. Now, just how many more years should Nintendo continue supporting the Switch as their primary hardware? I asked Switch owners just that, and the most common response? Well, it's now just one year, making 2025 the last year of Switch support. This kind of pretty much aligns with the answer given last year. Putting the switch aside, I also asked when respondents expect Nintendo to launch their next system, and most feel the next machine will arrive in early 2025. As for what price people are expecting Nintendo's next console to launch at, by far, most seem to think it will cost around $400 US at launch. I also asked what sort of key features people want to see in Nintendo's next hardware. Key changes folks want to see are the obvious kind of mix of more kind of powerful hardware performance and graphics, but by far, backwards compatibility was the number one feature noted. In fact, as you can see, 76% of Switch owners deem backwards compatibility on Nintendo's next machine as an extremely important feature. Around 80% of Switch owners feel that Nintendo will stick with the Switch brand for their next system. The other 20% feel they'll move to a new name. Just for fun, I asked respondents to make a guess for what Nintendo might actually call their upcoming new hardware. And here are kind of the most common responses shared. The top result actually was Super Nintendo Switch. This was followed by Nintendo Switch 2, kind of closely. And then we've got kind of a smattering of other responses, including new Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Pro, and a variety of others, including the likes of Switch U, Switch Up, Switch Advance, Switch Plus, Switch Ultra, NX even and many, many more. I enjoyed some of the kind of more humorous responses here too, such as the Switcheroo or Switch 2 Electric Boogaloo, and of course, Switch Emix Switch Face. Thanks. (laughs) I also asked folks what would be the one of one dream launch title that they'd like to see launch on Nintendo's next system, and by far, 
a 3D Mario game was the top response, with many kind of specifically saying Super Mario Odyssey 2. Metroid Prime 4 was the second most common response, followed by a new Mario Kart entry. Zelda, Animal Crossing, and Xenoblade Chronicles were also popular responses here. I end things by asking on a five-point scale, generally kind of how satisfied folks are with the Nintendo Switch as a platform overall. The response? Well, it was 4.3 out of 5, and this is the exact same response as last year, and very similar to the year before that, to be honest. It kind of suggests a sustained high level of satisfaction with the Switch platform overall. So that's it. Like I said at the top of the video, you can find a link in the description to the written report if you'd like to kind of look over the charts in more detail. I also publish a weekly Nintendo email with the best Nintendo reads of the week. That's over at switchweekly.com if you want to check that out. Again, there's a link below. Over 9,000 people read it every week, so it must be half decent, I guess. If you've enjoyed this analysis, please do hit like on this video and share it. And now I'm just going to kind of close things out with some of the comments left on the survey about the Switch platform as a whole. Thank you so much for watching. Despite being a gamer all my life, one with strong memories of gaming as a child, the Nintendo Switch revitalized my interest in the hobby and it's given me the best gaming experiences of my life. 2023 was an all-time year for Nintendo, truly cementing the Switch as an all-time great console. I have many qualms with Nintendo's business practices, but the game output is undeniable. I think I'm ready for what comes next though. Seven years on, the Switch has become the best Nintendo console since the Super Nintendo. Endless lineup of great games, regular Nintendo Directs, great first party titles. What more can you really want? A fantastic hybrid console. It has a huge library of games and different ways to play. The Joy-Con drift situation is a sore thumb and really needs to be addressed in the future to prevent it on the next console. A fun, pure gaming console.